I cracked the Offsec Wireless Professional, that's the OSWP certification within one week. I'm gonna tell you how I did that and how you can follow in my footsteps in this video. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I am a cybersecurity professional, more specifically a penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. I have six years of experience in the field, total certifications, bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, and currently working on my master's degree in cybersecurity. Before I tell you how to crack the OSWP in a week, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. So when I say it took me one week to do the OSWP certification, I really do mean it took me exactly one week. More specifically, it took me 26 and a half hours to go from nothing to certified. However, with that being said, the amount of time to pass a certification depends from person to person. So you might be a person who has a little less experience than me and you might not be able to soak up information as fast as I can. Or on the flip side, you might have more experience than me and you might be able to soak up information faster than me. So don't hold yourself to the 26 and a half hours because you know this is my 12th certification that I've gotten. So I have a lot of experience with doing exams it's not my first OPSEC certification and I have a ton of knowledge and I have a lot of years of experience. So what is the OSWP? The OSWP is probably the best and honestly the only one that I know about wireless penetration testing certification on the market. It is offered by OPSEC who is known for its strict exams and procedure certifications such as the OPSEC Certified Professional, that's the OSCP. The OSWP proves that a person has a good understanding of wireless assessment methodologies and practical skills to conduct effective security tests against wireless networks. OSWPs are able to identify existing encryption and vulnerabilities in 802.11 networks. They can circumvent network security restrictions and recover the encryption keys in use. Skills include greater insight into wireless offense security and expanded awareness of the need for real world security solutions. Using various wireless reconnaissance tools, implementing attacks against WPA personal and enterprise encrypted networks, understanding how to implement different rogue access point attacks, implementing attacks against wireless protective setup that's WPS networks, using various tools to crack authentication hashes, and implementing attacks against captive portals. The exam also demonstrates that OSWPs are able to perform under imposed time constraints. So who is the OSWP for? So in my personal and humble opinion, there's only a few people that the OSWP certification is actually for. And those are people who are super fascinated and intrigued by wireless hacking. So if that's you, definitely go after the certification. People who actually conduct wireless penetration tests in the real world. So if you're doing that and you're not certified, then you probably don't even need to study at all. You probably know what you're doing and you could probably get this one faster than me. And then the last person that this is for is anybody who is a fan of offset certifications who has extra lab time on their hands. So for me, I had extra lab time and that's what motivated me to actually go ahead and do this because it was an easy kill and I had extra lab time on my hands. So that begs the question, is the OSWP worth it? So if you don't fall in one of those camps that I just mentioned, then this certification probably isn't worth your time and your money because this is an offset certification after all and offset certifications are pretty expensive. However, with that being said, the OSWP course, that's the PEN 210, is thrown with every single Learn One slash Learn Unlimited subscription. So if you purchase a Learn One subscription and let's say you go for the OSCP and you pass the OSCP within your year, then you're gonna have a ton of extra lab time for the OSCP and the PEN 210 is actually included with that subscription. So if you pass early and you didn't use your entire year for your Learn One subscription, this is a perfect time to go and get the OSWP certification. Also, like I said earlier, if you are a wireless penetration tester and you're continuously doing wireless penetration tests and you don't have a certification, then it's probably worth going and getting the certification because this is exactly what you do. And I know a lot of clients really like seeing certifications and so does employers. So in that case, it's 100% totally worth it. So let's talk about how practical the course is. So in my opinion, one of the negative aspects of the Pen 210 course is that I would say the first like third of the course is just packed with like theoretical nonsense, which is good to have that theoretical background. However, that information isn't really useful to help you pass the certification and that information doesn't really make you a wireless hacker. But once you get past the theoretical section of the course, the rest of it is 100% practical and it directly correlates to the exam and real world wireless hacking. So my advice, if you already have a lot of theoretical knowledge when it comes to wireless networks, so you can probably skip the first few sections of the course and go straight into the hands-on activities. 
And if I would have done that, I probably would get the certification done in like 18 to 20 hours rather than 26 and a half. But I actually did read all the theoretical information just so I didn't miss anything. And honestly, if you skip it, you're not missing a whole bunch. In a typical offsec fashion, the course doesn't have every single thing that you need to know to pass the exam. And a lot of people, they gripe at that, they complain about that. That's one of the things I like about offsec certifications because when you're in your exam, you have to learn on the fly. You have to do a lot of Googling on the fly. And that is what you have to do in real world penetration testing. And that's what makes it a good certification because it actually tests your real world hacking abilities, which is looking things up on the fly. So if you are the type of person who needs to be handheld through the course and you need everything in the course to find success on the exam, then you are going to be disappointed. It's a very similar to the OSCP. Not as serious as the OSCP because OSCP requires a lot of external resources, whereas the OSWP requires maybe a handful, very small amounts of external resources to get you over the hump to pass the exam. Which brings me to the one and only external resource that I actually use to supplement my studies for the OSWP exam, and that is the Wi Fi Challenge Lab 2.0. So once you create an account and you get into the challenges, you can see there's a few challenges in here that you can try out and you don't need to do all of them to pass the certification. So I started with introduction and I worked my way up and you can see I got to the recon management section. I did these three, but I never made it to the management section up here. So I never made it to challenge 18. I would say if you complete all these down, then you're good to go. If you can do that with little to no help, then you are pretty good for the exam. And if you need a lot of help, that's okay too, because I did need a lot of help to go through these. There is walkthroughs on this website that you can look, and uh, overall you are going to learn a ton because the OSWP, that's the Pen 210 course, doesn't tell you everything. However, this course tells you a lot of things that you need to know to pass the exam, and I couldn't recommend the Wi-Fi Challenge Lab enough but even after doing the wi-fi challenge lab there was still some things that i had to google and i had to research and learn on the fly during my exam so definitely be prepared for that so let's get into recommending prerequisites i would recommend a basic understanding of networking linux wi-fi password cracking encryption wireshark and public key infrastructure that's pki before starting pen 210 you don't have to be an existing pen tester to find success in this course. However, it does help significantly. So if a lot of those topics I just mentioned is foreign to you, then you're probably not ready for this course. However, everything that I just mentioned, if you already know that, then you are already prepared to start the Pen 210 course. Now let's talk about how I tackled the Pen 210 course. So as I said before, I read all the theoretical stuff and I honestly didn't need it. Some people might need it, some people might not need it. So you have to gauge your level of understanding while you're going through those topics. Maybe skim through it, and if you see something that you've never seen before, definitely read up on that. However, if you skim through things and you're like, oh, I know this, check, I know this, check, I know this, check, then you can probably skip it all. But really, what the most important part in this course is when you get to the hands-on activities, when you see the videos with the terminal and you see commands being ran, that is the prime time to pay attention to the course. And every single command that they put in those videos and in the course and the PDF, you want to copy those and you want to put them in your notebook and you should have an entire notebook filled with commands from the course in your notebook. That way when you get into the exam, all you have to do is copy, paste, copy, paste, and then maybe change uh, a, a word or two in the commands at most. The last thing you want to do is memorize sy syntax. Rememorizing syntax for commands is honestly a waste of your time because it is an open book exam. So definitely take your time and write down as many notes as you possibly can regarding those commands and why you're running them. So you need to know, you know what the command is, but you also need to know why and in what situation you would run it. So I would write down a command and I'll be like, hey, you run this command to do this, this, and this. Why would I want to do this, this, and this? And I would just write about that. And you want to put as much information as you can into your notes because, you, like I said, you want to know the commands, but you also want to know why you're running those commands and what those commands are actually doing for you. And if you do all that and you're taking really good notes and you're really understanding the concepts behind, you have to watch the videos a handful of times to, to really understand it. That's fine because I had to watch um, some of the more advanced level stuff towards the end of the course 
multiple times to really understand and I wrote them down in my notes probably like twice actually because I really wanted to make sure I understood it because that stuff in the course you're definitely going to want to know for the exam and like I said you don't want to accidentally typo your commands so the more you can copy and paste the better with that being said there are exercises during the course and honestly I didn't complete a single one of them and the reason why I didn't complete a single one of them is because it is pretty hard to emulate a Wi-Fi network and I didn't want to go out and spend time finding a new router spending money on a new router setting up a purposely insecure network because that's exactly what you have to do in these labs and you definitely don't want to make your your actual home network insecure because then your neighbors can hack your Wi-Fi. So you definitely don't want to do that either. So I actually uh, didn't do either one and uh, I really relied on the Wi-Fi challenge labs that I mentioned earlier. So if you are in a situation where you can't or even if you just don't want to do the exercise during the course, by all means, you don't have to. I didn't do that. And uh, I think the Wi-Fi challenge labs is really the only hands-on labs that is really needed and with those wi-fi challenge labs they are emulated wireless networks and it actually is really easy all you do is download a vm and then you're pretty much set and you're off to the races as long as you know how to download a vm and install a vm there's instructions on the website you're good to go but don't let me discourage you if you actually want to go out and buy a, a junk router and set up a purposely insecure network that is actually the best and most effective way to learn how to wirelessly hack because that's real world and you're gonna get a lot more benefit out of that. So if you are able or if you want to and you have the time to do that, definitely go out and do that. I don't wanna discourage you from not doing that. Uh, sometimes it's not all about passing a certification fast. Matter of fact, if you do that for a certification, you're actually hurting yourself in the long run. So I don't recommend that. However, if you, if you wanna do that, it can be done. So now let's talk about the actual exam. So in the exam, there's going to be three scenarios and you need two of them to pass. And one of them is mandatory. So what that means is if you have three scenarios, one's mandatory. If you do the two non-mandatory, that's two out of three scenarios. Yes. However, you didn't do the mandatory one, so you're going to fail. So my advice is to, when you load up the exam, you want to start working on the exam that's already preloaded for you. Because I read online from other like Reddit posts and some other uh, blog posts out there that it takes you know 15 to 20 minutes to switch scenarios now in my experience that wasn't the case it took more like like five minutes to switch scenarios but the point being is when you switch scenarios it's going to eat up your time and time is of the essence because you only get three hours and 45 minutes to do the exam so you want to waste as little time as possible so like i said whatever situation whatever scenario is loaded up first just do that first if it's a non-mandatory one and you spend over an hour and a half on it then you definitely want to just hop off that and then move to your mandatory scenario and then do your mandatory scenario and then after your mandatory scenario go do the third scenario that you haven't touched yet because like i said you only need two out of three so there is one scenario one of the optional scenarios you can just not do and you'll still pass the exam now in my situation i was able to complete all three scenarios in the time and i think three hours and 45 minutes is the perfect amount of time because i wasn't rushed but at the same time is i only had five minutes left to spare but then the reason why i had five minutes left to spare is because my vm actually crashed and i had to re-log into my vm and i had to reset up my entire lab like right when i was finished up with one of the scenarios so i basically had to do my first scenario twice unfortunately but uh, other than that i had a pretty smooth uh, exam experience and it, it crashed because of of my own fault so it was my host vm it wasn't the offset proctored exam that crashed on me it was my own vm that i set up myself so um, maybe i set it up wrong maybe i didn't give it enough ram or enough cpus or something i didn't get enough resources and it crashed on me so that was on me it was not on offset but yeah three hours and 45 minutes it sounds long but for an offset certification that is actually very short because all the other exams are 24 or 48 hours so when you get an exam, you don't want to waste any time. So I passed my first scenario and then I passed my mandatory scenario. And after that, I went and took like a five, 15 minute break, something like that. And I went and got a snack, ate some food, went to the bathroom and I uh, got a, got my coffee cup refilled. So, and then I came back for my, my third and final scenario. And that one was actually the hardest for me uh, because that was the one where I had to look up a bunch of information and research on the fly. And uh, I didn't have all the answers in my in my notes. Uh, uh, you know, the the course didn't really teach me all that much about that particular scenario. 
And uh, that's what made it really fun. I was like, man, this is hard. They didn't tell me how to do this. And uh, I don't really know exactly what to do here. And uh, that's what made it fun. And that's why I like offsite search because it is a challenge. And if you don't like being challenged, then this certification is definitely not for you because it will challenge you, even though it took me one week to go from nothing to certified. And overall, I had a good course and exam experience. There are times where you're gonna get stuck and that's part of the process and personally, uh, that's what's what makes it fun and that's what makes it a great certification. Now let's talk about the exam report. Unlike the OSCP exam, you don't have to have an executive summary, detailed methodology, and recommended fixes for your vulnerabilities in your report. The report is only the steps you took to obtain the proof.txt and a handful of screenshots along the way. So for my report, it was like 26 pages long and I was as detailed as possible. So basically, uh, the way an offsite report goes, or even any pen test report, you just want command your in, screenshot, command your in, screenshot, and then information on why you did what you did. And then uh, just go down all the report and just be as detailed as possible. The goal is to have someone look at that report and if they follow your instructions step by step, they can also compromise the exact same target if they followed along with the report. And that pretty much wraps it up. However, I do want to leave you so, with some extra tidbits here. So I was explaining a lot of exam tips along the way. However, I didn't fully cover all the tips. So that's what this section of the video is going to be about. So I did mention that I did use the Wi-Fi challenge lab as an external resource. There's also another external resource that I would recommend if you're struggling and you need more assistance. I would say David Baumel's cracking Wi-Fi WPA2 handshake video is worth watching if you want additional practice. And as with every offsec certification, you definitely want to take good notes and you want to take good screenshots along the way. That's why I had only five minutes left to spare in my exam because I wanted to make sure that I had all the notes and I had all the screenshots that I need. I, I actually triple checked all of that and I actually compromised each target more than once because if you have time, you want to go back and follow your own steps and make sure that your, what you wrote down is actually going to work because the last thing you want is, you know, the offsec person reading the report and getting lost in your steps. So you want to confirm your own steps and your own way of thinking and every command that you ran again, if you have time to do that. So that's, that's why I had almost no time remaining because I actually did take the time to, you know, compromise the target more than once because I wanted to make sure that yes, what I did, worked 100 percent of the time because that's what offset report graders are looking for furthermore every time you get done with a scenario you want to create a new tab in your terminal so you never want to clear your terminal the reason why you never want to clear your terminal is because once you get out of the exam environment you're out of the exam environment there's no going back and there's no going and seeing what was in the lab and if you forgot to take notes then you, that information is gone forever however if you never clear your terminal, then you have everything in the terminal. So if you did forget to write something down, you do have your terminal to fall back on in that situation. In conclusion, I had a great time with the OSCP certification all from the course all the way to the exam. However, I would say the first third, 33% of that course was theory and very boring and I was falling asleep and that part was very rough. But once you get past that and you start getting the hands-on stuff, it becomes a lot more fun. And then when you get an actual exam, that is really fun in my opinion. I enjoyed that challenge quite a bit. So overall, it was a great and pleasant experience. And I would recommend it if you have extra offset lab time, you're a wireless penetration tester, or if you're just someone who is enthusiastic about wireless hacking in general. If you don't fall in those camps, then it's not worth spending the money and the time on this certification, in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video of me talking about the OSWP certification, definitely check out my other video, how I passed the OSCP on my first try. It's actually one of my most popular videos, and I really enjoyed the OSCP experience a lot more than the OSWP experience. So if you're interested in the OSCP, definitely check out this video as well.